Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. You know, I'm always looking for ways in which to simplify things. One long established way of doing that has been to limit the number of colours in my palette. Well, I have two blues and two yellows. And in this demonstration, I'm hoping to show how those four colours can work together in perfect harmony. Not to mention enable me to simplify the task of painting a relatively complex scene. Well, the full project is available to those who subscribe to my online student service. It features the full length uncut version of this painting demonstration, a step by step breakdown and a guide to painting it yourself. More information on how to access all of that will be available at the end and in the video description below. In the meantime, I'll just grab my brushes. This is a photograph I took while out walking near West Burton in Wensleydale in the Yorkshire Dales. The mossy lane and rich shadows attracted me instantly, but what also interested me was their juxtaposition with the light, misty fields and trees lurking in the background. I'm going to start by drawing the scene out using a 2B pencil. At this early stage, it's important to keep things as simple as possible, concentrating on the basic shapes of elements and how they relate to each other on the paper. I want to combine two of my favourite blues and two of my favourite yellows, all of which have slightly different properties. So let's start with a graded wash of Prussian blue and lemon yellow. A graded wash is exactly as it sounds, a single colour graduating from dark to light or vice versa, or in this case I want two colours to graduate from one to the other as smoothly and seamlessly as possible. I'll apply the lemon yellow from the bottom upwards in the hope that where the two meet they do so amicably. To help them, I should probably mention that I have my board set at a gentle angle. That way, I know which way the paint is going to flow and I'll have gravity helping things along. Lemon yellow is a cool, almost acidic colour. Cadmium yellow, on the other hand, is much warmer. Both are opaque colours and quite vibrant. But on this occasion, I'm wanting to juxtapose the cool with the warm. While the cadmium yellow is still damp, I'm adding some Prussian blue to the wash. Well, this is to create some variation and the two colours combined will also naturally create green. Graduating the wash in this way, creating a dark foreground that transforms seamlessly into the light, is another means by which the illusion of space and depth can be created. For the distant background walls and trees, I'm going to use a light mix of French ultramarine. Keeping distant objects light in tone and cool in colour is a great way to keep them back and prevent them from competing with whatever is happening in the foreground. It's worth noting that the walls need to follow the contours of the ground. By doing so, they help to visually explain those contours. If I make those brush marks too straight, for example, then the message I would be sending out would be that the ground was flat. Remember, a viewer only has the information we provide for them to help them understand the scene. 
Get that wrong and you could be sending out entirely the wrong message and not the one you wish to convey. Having established the main background elements, I'm now using the same French ultramarine to create a few details in the foreground wall. As a general rule, it's good practice to reuse colours wherever possible within a composition. Such recycling helps to promote harmony and cohesion in a scene, subtly linking those elements together. As you can see, I'm also using the opportunity to introduce a few shadows falling across the road. In the same way that I brought the French ultramarine from the background into the foreground, I want to repeat the procedure with the yellows, but in reverse. Starting with the cadmium yellow, I'm applying it to the background fields just beyond the walls in the middle distance. Then I'm going to apply lemon yellow also, blending the two together and then softening them off into the surrounding blue of the field. This might seem like a roundabout way of doing things and you're probably wondering why I didn't simply use the yellow in the background when I applied it the first time around. The reason is because at the time I didn't know how much of the yellow I would need in that area, if any at all. The reason I'm applying it now is to disperse the yellow through the rest of the scene instead of it being restricted to the foreground. In watercolour we work from light to dark. Moving on, I've mixed up a light grey from French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber. I say light grey, yet it is still darker than any other colours in the scene up until now. I've started out by applying it to the walls in the middle distance, slightly increasing their prominence and pulling them forward as I do so. I'm also going to use it to paint the tree in that area. The main point that I want to make with this is that intensity of tone can help to explain an object's position depth-wise within a scene. It isn't a hard and fast rule by any means and although it works for this particular composition, it doesn't necessarily apply to all scenarios. There are many instances where dark objects might lurk in the background while the lightest and brightest objects reside in the foreground. In this instance, however, tonal values equate directly to the implied distance from the viewer. I've specifically rendered my most distant elements in cool light hues as objects get closer to us, so the tones get darker and the colours richer. Well, I hope it's working anyway. At this point, I've added a little extra burnt umber to the mix to break down the details in the wall and help to differentiate it from those in the background. I'll also be using it on the track, 
which must not only obey the laws of perspective and appear to get narrower as they recede away from us, but to reinforce that, I'm also going to lighten it by diluting the mix a little with water. watercolour we work from light to dark. In general, though not always, we also work from the biggest, broadest washes towards the tiniest details. The finishing touches, often applied with the fine tips of our smallest brushes. Not all paintings follow such a straightforward, uneventful plan, of course. Some paintings can be chaotic in their production, tormenting us with unexpected twists and turns and surprises that we could probably live without. Part of a watercolour artist's core skill set should preferably include the ability to monitor their progress with a critical but creative eye and be able to turn a potential disaster into a magical moment, often referred to as a happy accident. It's a good idea to keep your colours to a minimum. I generally only use two different blues and two different yellows in my work. Here I hope they've come together in relative harmony with a little help from Burnt Umber and Alizarin Crimson, of course. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and found it helpful. Remember, the full-length uncut version is available along with step-by-step -step guides and project notes in my online student service. Well, for full details on how to subscribe to that service, simply visit my website at peterwoolley.co.uk and select online tuition from the main menu. Until next time, Take care.